Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Ishan Rahat Qureshi. I am the CEO and founder of High Achievers League. So today we have with us Ms. Atiya Malik. She recently got admission in PhD Higher Education in Student Affairs at the Oklahoma State University. So welcome Atiya. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Tita uh, Gapsanay. How are you? I'm good. So uh, let me start by asking you, uh, what were you doing right before, you know, you started your journey towards U.S. education? Um, I have been teaching about 17 years plus, um, K to 12 uh, and undergrad and graduate studies. So I'm a visiting faculty member at the National College of Arts. And I do multiple jobs within the school systems also. So it has been almost two decades of uh, an educational journey for me. All right. And what was your degree that you had, your final terminal degree from Pakistan? Um, so I have two degrees. I have one from Pakistan, which is a master's in interior design. And I teach interior design at NCA. And I also have a master's in education, leadership and management from the University of Melbourne, which was my second master's, uh, which I did in 2019. All right. So can you briefly tell us about your journey towards um, this uh, admission that you got for PhD? Um, so initially, uh, shortlisting from a wide range of schools that offer uh, educational leadership based uh, PhDs, uh, narrowing down uh, about 15 initially. And from that, um, I applied to six of the schools, which um, where I actually sat down and looked at the different advisors and supervisors available and, and whose interest matched mine. And um, I was offered admission to Oklahoma State University. Um, it has been an interesting ride to getting that PhD. All right. So for the benefit of the students, I would just, uh, since we have been working uh, with you as well uh, in your journey towards PhD, so I'll just mm -hmm. name a few universities where Atiya applied. So uh some of them were university of michigan at ann arbor university of maryland university of washington university of miss wisconsin at medicine uh oklahoma state university and ohio state university so when we talk about oklahoma state university atia so uh by now you are well versed with their program and the name of the program is quite interesting it's phd higher education and student affairs so this is all about being in the administration side of education is that true yes um it comes under the school of educational leadership and management and policy so uh, they're the overarching school that will handle this phd and then uh, they actually divide their interests uh, because policy making administration can go from schools to universities, to, uh, you know, vocational schools. So it's quite a wide range that's available. But I chose higher education and student affairs because I've been teaching undergrad and graduate schools um, on and off for quite some time. I actually started my career um, teaching undergrads uh, in 2006. Right. So uh, it is something I'm very interested in. Um, to help students actually achieve their best performance and to help my students actually get to a success in life. So it's very important how university sets out their students. Um, and we don't have a lot of people in Pakistan who work under this umbrella uh, for now. So I'm hoping that I can come back and then bring some expertise to um, this aspect of higher education. Right. So did you have any publications at the time when you applied? Um, I have one publication which is under process. Um, it is with um, a friend whose PhD was based on women leadership and how um, families and our uh, friends and our teachers actually, um, you know, 
help us decide what we want to do in our future or how it is overshadowed by other people's choices. Um, so how women in Pakistan tend to choose their careers in life. So that's a publication which has been submitted, but it hasn't yet been, um, you know, right. uh, published. So we can safely you. say that officially um, you don't have a publication right now, but no, you are in the process of doing that. So yes. hopefully you'll get one pretty soon. All yes. right. So... Um, so, uh, is there anything in specific you like about this university uh, or this department? Um, so, when I applied, um, I had actually looked at uh, the supervisor that I got and I'm really happy that um, she picked me because uh, uh, her interests and my interests align quite a bit uh, when it comes to research and uh, the wide range of work that she does also spills over to things that are interest to me but I'm unable to do in Pakistan so it's something I can learn from her um, the cohort is pretty small so it's a cohort based PhD so we're about 13 people that they've taken in for this year um, it's a very one-on-one -on -one process and I know PhDs are meant to be a lonely journey but um, when you have other people uh, who are within the same course doing whatever they're doing um they've connected us already i've already had meetings with my other uh, you know uh, batchmates i'm um you know already talking to some of them we're sharing notes we're sharing our country's backgrounds so i fe felt that this experience where it is a smaller cohort would be a better experience especially with my uh, previous experiences um, in Australia, um, I've been in a class where we were a hundred plus students in one class, and um, it, it you can't you have to you know uh, pull a miracle for the teacher to actually notice that you are also part of that class, and um, I would I then mean, one of my biggest choices was to have something that is very personalized in that manner. Yeah, so um, hopefully you'll have a very different experience this time with a small class yeah. size and one-on-one -on -one attention. So mm -hmm. uh, that's great. So also for the benefit of our students, uh, as long as I remember, you didn't have to get green signal from the supervisor before you applied. So you actually, first you applied for this PhD, then you yeah. were selected for admission, and then you were granted a supervisor by the admission committee. Is that true? Yes. Uh, so yeah, I was never in touch with my supervisor. Um, but what I did was in my personal statement, I did mention uh, the supervisor and that uh, how my uh, research interests aligned with her research interests. So that kind of uh, helped them connect me to her because then the school has chosen her as my primary or for now temporary uh, supervisor till if I go to school and think that I might want to do something different from what I'd actually proposed earlier. I find that this uh, option that you still have the choice of, uh, you know, what you want to do in the future and not have it, you know, set in stone before arriving in the US. Um, that's kind of like a, a lot of weight off the shoulders because I am somebody who has a lot of uh, interests and um, I keep doing a lot of things, so I want my options to be open. Right. And I think it's almost impossible to get into an Australian or a British university in PhD without having a supervisor, you know, pre-approved for applying. Pre-approved so, so, and a pre-approved yeah. uh, research. Uh, you have to give in your research proposals. Uh, yeah. I have been through the Australian system. I have seen, I have friends who are... Um, now finishing up their PhDs and adding doctor to their titles. But um, I've seen um, how, um, you know, streamlined it was for them and they could not move left to right. Um, it had to be chosen way before they even went to Australia. Right. So there's a lot of flexibility in the American system. And uh, since you sometimes you uh, do not need to exactly specify what research you would like to do. So you would even have some flexibility once you land there and you start talking to your supervisor. So probably your research uh, would actually your thesis would actually evolve as yes. as you are there and as you start working on it. So I yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do feel that they let you have that option because they know we're not experts and 
we still are learning. So it lets us have that window to build ourselves and actually find that point where we actually enjoy what we're doing for our PhD um, rather than suffer through it. All right. And one a very interesting thing was that initially you were offered admission in Oklahoma State University, but not the funding, but uh, eventually you did have full funding. So what's the story behind that? So the, my roller coaster was uh, when I got offered the position, my own supervisor uh, did not have funding. She'd already had somebody join her in the year earlier uh, than I accepted my offer. And she'd offered her funding to this person. Um, she gave me a month's time and said, or asked me for a month's time and um, requested that uh, she should be given time to find somebody who could offer me funding within the university. Um, so she apologized um, and said, okay, we'll look at it in about a year's time and let's see, uh, we're going to start much earlier for you. So maybe next year we can get you in spring or in another set, but uh, fall 2024 uh, is a big apology from the school. I deferred and um, within that deferral, um, I made other plans because, um, you know, um, who knows, it, would it work out? Would they really uh, put in effort to get me there? Um, you know, one questions quite a lot of these things. Okay, if they can't manage a funding up right now, would it be possible next year? So um, I started working on other things, but luckily about two weeks, three weeks after she'd already told me to defer, um, my supervisor emailed me back that there is somebody who is looking for a graduate assistant and um, they would like to interview me. Um, before offering me that position. And that person is actually the VP of well-being for the school. And when I uh, had a Zoom meet meeting with him and the interview, he offered me the position um, within the interview and he was really happy um, to get me on board because a lot of my work has been based on student well-being. So I find myself in a way in an interesting situation and I absolutely love the idea of working with two different people with very different uh, interests but both interests align with mine so um, I'm getting funding from the student affairs department of the university which is basically for all the students and their students well-being uh, whereas I will be studying in the education department so they're two uh, departments running parallel to one another uh, with the same or similar interests. Right. So you have tuition waiver, which means you won't have to pay the tuition, uh, yes. but you also have stipend. So if I may ask uh, how much stipend per month do you have? It is about 1950, which is their, is their standard for the school of education. So All right. it is a cheaper state in that sense. Um, um, I think stipends vary to vary depending on which state you are in and which city you are in. So the education department offers a 1950 uh, stipend per month. And my insurance is also covered by the university. All right. So Atiya, I know that you are planning to pack up these days and leave as soon as possible. So I'm not going to take much of much more of your time. So last question. So another interesting thing about your uh, journey is your visa. So you did have a B1, B2 and you got it uh, converted into F1. But for that, you had to apply all over again for an F1 visa. Yes. So uh, that's true, right? Yes. So uh, my B1, B2 still stands. Uh, they've okay. given me another one. So I have two visas on my passport right. right now. So All they right. haven't canceled the other one. I can, I think, travel on both. But uh, the rule is that I must specify what I'm entering in for and then get that visa stamped or um, and officially ticked that this is the reason I'm entering the country. Um, for the student visa, they have a one-month uh, window that you can only enter a month prior to the program starting. So um, that is where the cutoff time actually begins. Then they let you all come in. Right. So that's time. interesting because generally we hear that they cancel the B1, B2 visa and uh, give the F1 visa. But in your case, both are valid for now. Yes. 
All right. Okay. So any interesting questions you remember from your visa interview that may help students? Well, it, uh, initially, um, the person asked me what my thesis was about dissertation. Um, I told him it was still open-ended. Um, they want to know. And I think that is where the question mark came because I told him I did not specify a dissertation for now, but these are my interests. So that was something I thought that he might be just checking that how much had I already you know, informed the university, what was I telling them, was there a difference? Um, so that was one. Um, the other was um, basically, um, you know, he just asked me if I traveled before and which degrees I already had. So it was a very generic interview. They didn't ask me much, uh, especially concerning the program or what I would do on my return. So I was expecting these questions, but none of these were asked. Um, they asked me if I had dependents uh, that who would come along uh, since I do not have anybody. He was, uh, the, the interview was satisfied with that. Uh, never asked me anything on um, what else I would be doing in the US, uh, just what, you know, how was I funding it? I just told him I had a graduate assistantship. He asked me what that research was based on. So he wanted to double check that I knew who I would be working with for my research. Um, and I, I answered that quite clearly and didn't have anything else. Uh, it was, uh, I think, less than five minutes of just the person typing away and asking me, I think, five questions, maybe six questions. Okay, Atiya, so thank you very much for being part of this interview, and I wish you best of luck in your future mm -hmm. endeavor. You are starting a big journey, and I really uh, wish and hope that you would have a great time while you're in U.S. and uh, or, uh, you progress in your academic plans. So, Inshallah. Thank so you. Take care. Um, and watching, please keep, you, uh, keep us in your prayers. Yeah. Uh, much sure, needed. Sure, sure. Stay in touch. Thank you, Jim. Love is.